So here it is then, my setup tour for 2016. Now a lot has changed in my setup over the last year or so, and there is a lot of new stuff that I have changed or added. A lot of the stuff that I have changed or added has been recording gear or general peripherals. I have upgraded to a second monitor which is hung on the MDM 12D monitor arm. I will go over this in more depth later on. Kicking things off we have the mouse, the Logitech G502 Proteus Core. This is hands down the best mouse I have ever used, although I haven't really tried many gaming mice. I chose this one because I really like Logitech products, and this one sure hasn't let me down. I have had this mouse for a little over a year now, and it's performed great from the day I bought it, and excels in gaming and video editing. The mouse has the 3366 optical sensor that can operate at a staggering 12 thousand dpi. The mouse also features weights so that you can make it heavier or lighter depending on your preference. I personally don't have any of the weights in. You can pick up one of these bad boys for around the 50 to 60 pound mark. My keyboard is the Corsair Gaming K70 RGB with Cherry MX Blue switches. I've done a full review of this keyboard which I'll put in the little bubble above so that you guys can go and check that out, but in short, this keyboard is superb. I can't fault it. Cherry MX Blues provide a super nice tactile feedback that I love whilst typing. The aluminium construction of the keyboard is really high quality, and last of all, the RGB lighting is hands down the best on any keyboard in my opinion. Next up is the mouse mat that the two before mentioned peripherals sit on, the Corsair MM200 Extended Edition. I was on the search for a new mouse mat as the old one that I'd been using since my old setup tour had basically fallen to bits. I looked at various reviews and in the end bought the MM200 Extended Edition. I was a bit wary of how good it was going to be considering it cost me nearly £30, but I thought at that price it should be good. Turns out it's amazing and I totally recommend it. Super accurate, really soft and just an awesome gaming mouse pad. Moving on to my headset, I use the Rockat Cave XTDs. This headset offers a true 5.1 channel surround sound gaming experience with vibration drivers that imitate explosions. The 5.1 actually works too. You can hear people running behind you, it's insane. The headset is very comfy to wear for long periods of gaming time due to a thick padded headband and ear cups. And it also has a great rotatable mic which I used to use for full time YouTube voiceovers. Overall this headset is an insane for gaming and also works very well for video editing. The sound system that is on my desk is a 2.1 speaker kit from Alux. These are a great set of speakers and their clear crisp sound is super nice. My only gripe with them is the bass is very lacking. Plug it into a phone or iPad and the bass sounds dead. Plug it into the Rockout breakout box and they come alive. They still lack in bass though when compared to a good set of Logitech speakers. I've had these for a couple years now and they have been through several setup moves to where they are now. Bar the lacking bass, they are a great set of speakers. Now these two items are the most eye-catching and largest parts to my setup. They are my BenQ GW2760HS 27 inch monitors. These monitors have a mainstream resolution of 1920 by 1080p which is pretty standard now. They are VA panels which in my opinion are the best mix of IPS and TN for great response times and colour reproduction. Speaking of response times, these monitors are really good with 4 milliseconds response and a 60Hz refresh rate and as of these before mentioned response times and refresh rate, gaming with these is a complete pleasure. I don't have any colour correcting gear to calibrate these monitors but from my eye they are pretty great already. I have dived into the monitors built in menus and tweaked with various settings to get them how they are now and to suit my personal preference. You can pick up one of these great monitors for only £150. Now if you have a keen eye and if you were paying attention and listening at the beginning of the video you will have noticed that the monitors are suspended on an arm. Now this is the MDM 12D arm from Amazon and it comes in at only £30. It's a dual monitor arm that supports monitors up to 27 inches with either a 75 or 100 millimeter VESA mount. The arm is made out of very thick steel and is exceptionally made for its price. It has been holding up my monitors for two months now with no sign of sag or movement from the weight of the monitors. This has also helped to make my setup look much less cluttered and it gives the monitors a cool floating look. If you want to make your setup look really cool, pick one up now. Sitting on top of my monitors is my webcam. Now I used to use the Logitech Quick Cam that was horrifically bad and the other day it packed up so it was time to buy a new one. This is the cam of my choice, the TechNet 1080p webcam. It was only £20 and for Skype calls and face cam on videos it's going to be perfectly good. It nowhere near touches the quality of the Logitech C920 but at the time I couldn't stretch for £40 plus on a webcam. For only £20 it's a great piece of kit. 
For recording the voiceover of this video and all vocal audio for this channel, I am now using the Audio-Technica AT2020 Cardioid Condenser Microphone. This mic offers superb audio quality with excellent bass and response for its £70 price tag. The mic is suspended on a Niwa boom arm which gives me lots of flexibility in terms of moving the mic around which is really handy. I also have a Chinese made shock mount that the mic is sat in. I am unfortunately still awaiting my pop filter to arrive which is kind of a bummer. To complete the recording setup the AT2020 is plugged into the Focusrite Scarlett Solo USB audio interface. The red aluminium body of the Scarlett Solo is seriously nice and just screams out quality. As for the connections, it has one XLR port which supports the 48 volt phantom power capability which the AT2020 needs to function. Bar the single XLR port, there is a quarter inch jack for an instrument if you're recording music with the Solo as well as a half inch direct monitor port for monitoring what the mic is picking up in real time with no latency. There is also a volume knob for said monitor jack. Overall, the recording setup that I have is absolutely fantastic and I hope you guys really like the audio. I do still have my Logitech G27 racing wheel that was featured in my old setup tour video, but it has been placed under the desk for storage as I don't always want it on my desk. It is still performing like new and I love it. It is such a great peripheral to have. For my desk, I have the Malm from IKEA. It is an IKEA product and everybody loves IKEA products and this desk doesn't disappoint. It comes in at only £115 and has all the space I need and is the perfect height, width and length for my setup. It is well made and the colour suits my room. Overall the desk is a winner. The set of drawers I have under the extension part of the desk is the Gallant, also from Ikea. Coming in at £120, yes it is more expensive than the desk, it has a lockable top drawer and is easy to move around due to it being on caster wheels. The white colour gives a nice offset here due to everything else around it being black. Overall, I think this desk setup is really perfect. The chair I sit on is also a product from IKEA. This is the IKEA Marcus. I've had this chair ever since I got my desk and it's the most comfortable chair I sit in on a day-to-day -day basis. It is key to have something comfortable to sit on when you're at your desk for hours on end and this chair is the comfiest I have tried. The chair has the right mix of leather and mesh in its construction. The whole back of the chair being mesh and the actual weight supporting part of the chair being synthetic leather. The benefit of having the back portion made of mesh is that your back doesn't get unbearably warm during long sitting periods. The foam on the bottom portion is very thick which makes the chair very comfortable for long periods of sitting. Overall it is the perfect chair for my setup and it's faultless. Last but not least we have the PC that powers this whole setup. I built the machine about a year and a half ago after I raised enough funds to buy all the parts. Since building this machine it has been fast, reliable and the hub of all my internet, video editing, media consumption and gaming needs and continues to fulfill my needs to this day. Obviously it's been through some upgrades since I first built it, like more RAM and a new GPU, so here are the current specs. For the CPU we have the Intel Core i7-4770K. I have this chip overclocked to 4.2GHz for extra performance. The CPU cooler is the Cooler Master Sidon 240M closed loop liquid cooler which is charged with keeping my i7 cool. The motherboard is the Asus Maximus 6 Hero which is a ROG series board with all the great features. As far as RAM goes, I have 16GB of Kingston HyperX Beast 2133 which gives me a great expanse of RAM for when I'm doing video editing. The GPU is the Asus GTX 980 Strix and this handles all my gaming and video editing needs, supplying a lot of GPU horsepower for when I really need it. Storage in my system is quite varied. I have a Samsung 850 Pro 256GB SSD for boot and also for a few games that take a while to load on mechanical drives. A 1TB Western Digital Blue for games and video recordings, a 2TB Seagate Barracuda for mass storage and b-roll archiving and last but not least an old repurposed 60GB OCZ Agility 3 SSD for raw footage that comes directly off my camera. The whole machine is powered by the Corsair CS750M semi-modular power supply. This unit has powered the PC from the day I built it and is strong and reliable. Enclosing all this juicy hardware is the Fractal Design Define R4. With its super clean, minimalistic look, it sure suits my setup. So thank you very much guys for tuning in, I hope you really did like this video, I put all my effort into making this video look as good as I can. I would like to thank you so much for being with me for 2015 because it's been one hell of a year for the channel, I want to keep growing the channel for 2016 because that's what I want to do, make the channel bigger, start getting more content out, more reviews, all sorts of stuff like that. And you guys can be there as I go through the next year, so I'd like to thank you guys again for watching and sticking with me on the channel, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.